So finally, it's the user interaction. And to cover the user interaction, there's a thread of execution called task user. And in task user, there's an, a message handling loop, which uses this user event queue handle. Uh, and it receives messages from the user input devices. Uh, currently, there's only the touch screen on the LCD display and the touchscreen on the LCD display will send an interrupt which gets sent into this message queue and that interrupt then the actual message queue says to the touchscreen okay give me the coordinates of the touch on the display it gives x y and z z is supposed to be the um, touch pressure and x y is the x and y location on the actual display and there's a couple of system messages which get, get handled, uh, first of all. So if the actual display is displaying the virtual keyboard uh, for the system, then it will uh, receive a message keyboard event from resolving the XY coordinates on the um, actual display. So it will say, okay, that was within a keyboard, within the virtual keyboard. So what happens then is the the message loop will call a function which will convert the keyboard XY locations to an actual key press and it will return, it will send back to the message loop a message called keyboard key uh, so that the message can then be passed on to the user handling routines and then the user handling routines deal with that key as, as they see fit. The other system message that can occur is screen close. So on a GUI screen, on the top right hand corner, there's a close button. If someone presses that, then the system will handle that and they'll call the task switch app mode function. Uh, so whenever the user interface wants to switch the actual screens, the app modes, or you, uh, also known as the finite state of, of the actual user interface, uh, it has to call this function. Uh, so anything the system or the user wanted to change app mode has to call the function task switch app mode. And so when the screen close message occurs, then the system will call that itself to, to switch back to the default app mode. So once these messages come back to the actual system, so at this point you can either have a keyboard key message or another message would be an XY location on the display, which wasn't on the keyboard, which would be on a, a user interface control. So such as a text box or a checkbox or a button. Uh, so the system knows because it has a linked list of all the uh, the controls which have been registered with the application for the current screen. So it knows what's been pressed and it will send off the appropriate message to the actual application GUI handler. So it calls this thing called task message event and that distributes the message into the actual app screen handler itself. So for instance, the configuration screen handler or um, the, uh, pr the, monitor, the, the, config the monitoring handler, there's all the different screens uh, that are possible. It will know which screen to actually send the message to, the, the actual handler, because it will be the current handler for the app mode. So, and we go through the code in a second and that will become clearer as well. Now the app mode can deal with that, like if it says a keyboard press, it deals with the fact that like say a letter A has been sent to it, or maybe the number one or a return character has been sent to it, and it decides that it's gonna populate a particular text box with the, the characters that are sent from the virtual key thing, and it does that in this, this application. Uh, but once it's once it's done that, what say it's updated the checkbox or it's handled a key press and add, added it to a text text box, that's not currently being displayed. And so there's a set of functions which go along with this. And so if any any updates occur to the, to the GUI visual visual representation, like a character being added to a text box. The, fun the appropriate function gets called then to up send a message to the LCD display to update the display with the new character or with the checkbox checked or checkbox unchecked. And I'll, uh, I'll go for the source code next to show that. 
there's only one other thing that this uh, message ha message loop does is it it can handle um check in to see a check for a timeout on sleep mode so the actual software can handle sending the application into low power sleep mode so the sp32 shuts down and goes into its lowest power mode and there's a timer which by default the time timer is turned off so that it doesn't go into low power sleep mode but in the configuration screen and i'll show that at the end of the end of this video i'll show the actual application how it's configured to time out and send the system to sleep after user inactivity of a certain period of time uh, so what happens when it times out is it sends it to low power sleep mode the sp32 the, the screen shuts off all the all the tasks stop operating because it's in its lowest power mode and then if you want to come out of that mode all you have to do is touch the screen uh, and when you touch the screen it comes back out of the um, low, low power mode and uh, the application is displayed again and then you can continue using the application so the task user function is found in the file task underscore user dot c and so this is where you'll find the message loop so if i scroll down a bit in this in this code so this is where the message loop is and it just goes around this message loop it sits on here waiting for a message and it won't continue until it gets a message uh, but each time it gets a message, it'll go around this message loop and it checks to make sure that this message isn't the same as the last message. So if you're touching the, the display and there's a double touch um, thing, it's kind of a debounce mechanism. It just makes sure that you don't get the same message being processed multiple times. So like I say, there's a uh, system messages first of all. So this one is just checking to see if an interrupt occurred on the, on the um, touch screen. And if an interrupt did occur on the touch screen, um, what it does is it goes off and asks the touch screen the X and Y position where the touch screen was touched and also returns the Z position, which is the, the pressure at which the, uh, was, the screen was touched. And because the uh, touch screen is usually in low power mode, that's why in low power mode it can generate an interrupt, but it can't it can't tell you the X and Y locations. So that's why we turn the, the touch screen on, read the location, then turn the touch screen off afterwards. But that's that that code's just in here, so you don't have to worry about all this system stuff. Uh, just an explanation as to what you see when you get get to this code. Uh, the next system event which is handled is the if a if the virtual keyboard is touched, and this function resolves the virtual key, a keyboard message into the actual character which was touched. So if it was an A or a one or a backspace or a return character. It will then generate a message for that character, which will come back into this this message loop as a message, uh, or a screen close event, and then it does a, a it calls a, a function to close the screen. But what that does is it just changes the uh, the application mode, which is the current uh, the current screen, back to the icon screen in this particular case. So I'll come down here a bit more. So at the bottom, of this function um, is the code which does the timeout for the sleep. So all of this code you can ignore. This is where it counts down inactivity and then goes into sleep mode. So I've mentioned that on the way past. So the next uh, thing that that you'd be interested in is so when the when the uh, actual application mode is changed this is what gets called and it decides which mode is being changed to and does whatever needs to be done when it changes to the new mode now most of the time it's just in the current code it's just changing to the new mode and then updating the display but you, as you can see for the configuration, where if it goes into the configuration, what it does is it makes a copy of the current configuration into an edit configuration variable. Uh, and that way, when you're actually updating the configuration on the actual screen, uh, it just gets changed in the edit. And it's only if you click on the save button that it will get copied back to the actual configuration. So that's a way of uh, being able to cancel. So if someone clicks on the cancel button, 
then it won't save the configuration changes which have been made. It's only if they click on the save button. And this is the where messages come to for the user event. So this is this is the code that you'll be looking at and you'll be editing. So for each of the app modes or the states of the actual user screens, uh, you you it comes it sends a message that gets sent to that screen into here. It decides in here which mode it's in, uh, whether it's tool buttons or the app mode dials, uh, because we're using the config. Uh, this one is the one which I'll be explaining because that's the best screen to explain. So it decides that we're in the config screen and then it just passes the message which is there, which got passed into this uh, function uh, and it calls a function user state mode config. So each screen has its own user state mode function uh, and they're just named regularly like this. So you don't have to worry again about that. It's only when you get to the config area that you have to start deciding what you're, how you're going to handle messages. So here it is, uh, user state mode config and the message coming in. And then you decide what the message uh, is. So if, if or not it's related to this display, to this particular screen, so you can ignore any er erroneous messages which came in for something else and only handle messages which are uh, related to this particular uh, app mode. Uh, and then you decide what control it is. So if someone clicked on the up button for the duty cycle, then it handles that and adds five to the duty cycle. Make sure it doesn't go over 95. Uh, and then it clicks and then it calls this update config, which is the other function you have to be worried about. So this is reacting to all of the messages which happen to the user GUI, the user controls. And it does it for each, each, each of them. And it can, uh, if you click on the save button, then it, it does this. It, like I say, it copies the edit, uh, edit config that we made the copy of the edit of the config, which goes into editing which we updated when people are changing the stuff on the actual display and it copies it back to the actual config. So they're saving it there. If they click on cancel, then it doesn't go through this process. And so they, they just lose their, lose their changes. Um, but once, uh, the, but when the actual stuff on the screen needs to be updated, then with the actual data, which has been changed, you have to pass it into this, LCD data transfer append stuff. So this, so all what this does is it appends the data which has been changed to a message which goes to the LCD display. And if you go back to the LCD um, video, then you'll see in there there's IDs for the controls. And so the ID is being set here, ID one, ID two, and ID three to identify which control the data is going to. And then you tell it what the data is and the size of the data that's being sent. And that way you can send any kind of data you want. You can send numbers, you can send a text, or you can send objects because you send a reference to that object uh, and then telling it the size of that object. So you can send anything you want to the LCD display. The message gets sent to the LCD display or how, however many messages you append to this. Uh, and then the LCD display can update the data on the display. So that's all explained when it gets to the LCD display in the in the help video I've done for the LCD display. And down here you can see it just sending the message here. So I'm going to demonstrate how deep sleep mode works on this system. So if I go into the configuration screen and then go into the clock settings, so down the bottom here, I've got the sleep sleep mode and it can be set anywhere from 15 seconds to, to 55 minutes. So if I set it to 15 seconds and tick, uh, and down up here now, you see a countdown of when it will go to sleep. And when that gets to zero, you'll go into deep sleep mode 
and then you see the screen go off and you'll see the LED that's flashing on the ESP32 stop flashing. So that's gone into deep sleep mode. And to wake up from deep sleep mode, all you do is press the touch screen and it comes out of deep sleep mode and then starts counting down again. And But while if you're touching this, the display, while you've got user activity, it will actually uh, reset the counter. So it'll only time out after 15 seconds of in user inactivity or up to 55 minutes of user inactivity.